I'd like to welcome you to the class that I refer to as the Fundamentals of Electrical Safety. This is based on the 2021 edition of NFPA 70E, and it's really kind of a condensed version of a much longer qualified worker class. What I do in this two-hour course is I cover the, the fundamentals of electrical safety and the topics that I get into. We're going to talk about the electrical hazards, such as the obvious ones, the shock hazard, and the arc flash hazard, but we'll also talk about the blast hazard, ultraviolet light, shrapnel, because there's much more to the electrical hazards than just shock and, and arc flash. I'm also going to discuss electrical safety terminology. Not a lot of terms, but some of the main terms like the working distance, the arc flash boundary, things that are really important to electrical safety. And then I'm also going to talk about controlling the risk, using the hierarchy of risk control. And when it comes to the hierarchy of risk control, number one is eliminate the hazard. From there, we're going to talk about establishing the electrically safe work condition and all the steps that go along with establishing the electrically safe work condition. And then I'm going to show you how to perform the shock risk assessment and also show you how to perform the arc flash risk assessment. And when we talk about the arc flash risk assessment, that's going to be broken up into two different directions, where I'll be talking about an incident energy analysis, a calculated value of so many calories per square centimeter, the thermal energy. And then I'm also going to show you the NFPA 70E PPE category method. And, and I have an example that I'll show you of using the PPE category method, and we'll go through and take a look at that in detail. After that, we're going to take a look at arc flash labels. I'll walk you through a typical arc flash label and we'll talk about what the information on the label means, what it means to you as far as electrical safety. Then we'll wrap things up by talking about PPE and what goes into the PPE selection and arc rated clothing and equipment. And let me explain the significance of the working distance and why it is so critical for you. So here's what happens. Uh, if you have uh, arc flash labels on your equipment, I don't know if you do or not, but I'll assume you do. So if you have arc flash labels on your equipment, it's normally going to list uh, a certain amount of incident energy. How bad could this be? And that's based on a distance. So the distance is normally like 18 inches. So it's, a, it's basically stating there's a certain incident energy that if something goes wrong with this equipment, 18 inches away, my head and chest, where all the vital organs are, this is the energy. Now, What's critical of this is if you want to get up closer than that distance that's on the label, uh, the energy goes up. It goes up exponentially. And I know uh, a long time ago, I used to be involved with a lot of test and measurement, harmonic studies, power quality studies. And I was always getting my face right up in their into the equipment, holding our hanging probes off the equipment. And without understanding all this, because this was a long time ago, I'd think nothing of walking up to equipment, have my face right in it, and try to hang a probe off the end of like a little hex bolt or something. And um, you can't do that. If, if you're dressed up and protected for a certain amount of energy and then you get closer than the working distance, that energy goes up. It's going to be way beyond what's on that label. These distances, 18, 24, 36 inches, these are obtained... From IEEE, it's IEEE 1584, the arc flash calculation uh, methods that defines the working distances. And these will usually be on an arc flash label. So if you see a calculated energy, you have to consider, well, what distance is that associated with? So what you do if you're trying to evaluate the likelihood of an arc flash, you go to table 130.5C. And this is just one little line item from the table. There's a lot of line items in the table. And you look up the task that's going to be performed. Like this example that I show here, normal operation of a circuit breaker, switch, contactor, or starter. Basically, you're going to operate a device. Then you determine, okay, so is the condition of the equipment normal or abnormal? If the equipment condition is normal, there's a very limited likelihood of occurrence. In fact, 70E says no. I like to use the word limited because I would not like to say, nope, there's never, ever going to be an arc flash ever, ever, ever. That's a long time. It would be very unusual for an arc flash to occur. If it's abnormal, then yeah, you consider there's a likelihood of occurrence. And you check six boxes 
to determine if this is normal or not. Is the equipment properly installed, maintained, used in accordance with the instructions? Doors closed, covers in place, no evidence of impending failure. If you can check all those boxes, then the likelihood of occurrence, the response to that, is no. There's no, not a likelihood of occurrence of an arc flash. Does that mean you can operate the equipment with no arc rated PPE? Yeah, that's what it means. Would I operate equipment without arc rated PPE? Not me. I know too much about what can go wrong. Would I wear a big moon suit? No, probably not, but I would wear some you know, kind of PPE. I, I look at, if you're uh, working around any kind of energized electrical equipment at all, you should have something on, even if it's considered a, a minimal or negligible hazard. One of the most dangerous places to be, if an arc flash occurs, is on the secondary side of a transformer. Because what happens, an arc flash, the energy, it's made of two key elements, the short circuit current and the duration. And so the short circuit current, that depends on your system, the impedance, the utility, in this case, the transformer. That's part of it. The other part is the device that's gonna trip to limit the duration. If you're on the secondary side of a transformer, what device is that gonna be? It may very well be the utility fuse cutout up on a pole somewhere back in the back of the, the parking lot. Wow, how fast will that operate? Most utilities size their fuses for transformers to operate next Tuesday. And you know, you might think next Tuesday, well, kind of joke, but they take a long time, very long time. So if you have an arc flash that initiates on the secondary side of like a transformer, and you're waiting for the primary to operate, will it operate? Probably, I, mean, I can't say for sure, will it operate, it should. Will it operate quickly and limit the energy? No, not usually. It, it may take, you know, a second, two seconds, five seconds. Hey, congratulations, you made it to the finish line. Thanks for uh, sticking through to the end. So what happens next is you'll be able to take a quiz. There's a quiz as part of this. And upon receiving a passing score of 70% or greater, then you can print out your continuing education certificate. And you, you can store it in your personal library. We actually call it the brain vault, just a little bit of silliness. We do have a sense of humor. And you can go back and, and retrieve it as needed uh, in the future for your records or whatever you may need it for. So I appreciate you uh, tuning in and hope this really helped with your understanding about electrical safety. And just one more thing, job number one, eliminate the electrical hazard. So stay safe. Thanks for watching.